Hey everyone! The other day I was viewing an online webinar and the host mentioned the term shock load, and there was then some discussion on what it meant. So I thought I would take a few minutes to talk about the term and how we in the entertainment rigging industry use it. For the most part, we tend to use a few terms when talking about the loads we were suspending, whether that be lights, audio, scenery, or anything else. First and foremost, if a load is not moving, we call that a static load. Then, when we start to move the load, we call that a dynamic load. And then, we have this other term we use, shock load. Most people tend to define it as a force generated when an object suddenly stops moving. And although that is fundamentally correct, there are a few things we need to consider for a shock load to actually be a shock load. Shock loads are a specific type of dynamic loads. You could say it like this, all shock loads are dynamic loads, but not all dynamic loads are shock loads. Let's start exploring these forces. So here we have a typical electric chain hoist suspended from our magical floating truss. The hoist in turn is supporting our wonderful Acme load. When we start to lift the Acme load at a controlled speed, we create what is called a dynamic load. Well, what does dynamic mean? In our application, it's defined as movement characterized by constant change, activity, or progress. So as long as the load is moving, it's creating a dynamic load on the truss. So now, let's look at a different situation. Say we place our Acme load on a platform with a trap door, and we tie it to a tree branch with a length of rope. If we release the trap door, what happens? Our Acme load drops until the rope stops it. This is known as a shock load. Why? Because it has specific characteristics of its movement. Freefall distance. Freefall is defined as the fall of a load such that the only force acting upon it is that of gravity. So for a dynamic load to be classified as a shock load, only gravity can be pulling on the load. With both dynamic and shock loads, we ultimately want to determine what the peak force generated is. That way we know the hardware we selected is strong enough. So how do we measure that? Warning! 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 The following contains nerdy physics talk. Well, it all has to do with inertia. I'm sure we're all familiar with the famously misquoted version of Sir Isaac Newton's first law of motion which states, an object at rest will remain at rest unless you push on it. What that means is that an object, or in this case our load, will remain static unless we push on it, or pull on it in the case of a chain hoist. And to successfully make it move, we need to pull on the load with more force than just the weight of the object. If not, the load will remain static. This is where we get force equals mass times acceleration, where acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity per unit of time. Well, we have an equation for that too. It's acceleration equals the final speed of our load minus the initial speed of our load, all divided by time. So we can combine these two together to create force equals mass times the final speed of our load minus the initial speed of our load, all divided by time. So in the example of our chain hoist, we could in theory determine the peak dynamic load of our truss by doing some research about the travel speed of the hoist as well as how quickly it starts and stops. Our no brand hoist has a speed of 16 feet per minute, a capacity of 2200 pounds, and a start speed of half a second. Now, here is where it's important to make sure your units match. On hoist, our speed is usually in feet per minute, and our acceleration is in feet per second. So we need to convert feet per minute to feet per second. I've already done that for this example. 
So we take our final speed of 0.267 feet per second minus our initial speed of zero and then divide that by our time of half a second and then multiply that by our mass of 2200 pounds for a dynamic load increase of um wait something's not right here hmm what is it ah that's right i forgot something important in the u.s traditionally pounds are expressed as a unit of weight not mass so if we use 2200 pounds in our equation we won't get the correct answer let's erase that <laughs> Weight is defined as the force of gravity on an object and can be expressed by the equation weight equals mass times gravity. Now, look at those two equations. See how similar they are? That's not a coincidence. Because gravity is a constant, it has a known acceleration. We don't have to figure it out ourselves. We don't need to know either speed or the time. Gravity has an acceleration of 32.2 feet per second squared. So now we can plug in our variables. 2200 pounds is our weight. We don't know our mass yet. And gravity is that 32 feet per second squared. To solve for mass, we divide both sides by 32. After some simple arithmetic, we get an answer of 68.75. The unit of mass that goes along with pounds is called a slug. So that's 68.75 slugs of mass. So now we can put our 68.75 slugs into our original equation to figure out what the dynamic load increase is for our chain hoist. Again, after a little math, we get an answer of 36.71 pounds. It's important to note that because we multiplied mass by acceleration, our answer is in pounds. Remember before when I mentioned that shock loads are a specific type of dynamic loads? Ones where the only force pulling on the load is gravity? Well, that's what makes them different from other dynamic loads. With our hoist, if the load is static, then the force of gravity pulling down is equaled by the force of the hoist pulling up. For us to lift the Acme load, we need to increase the force of the hoist. As soon as we do, our Acme load starts to rise. If we reverse the direction, the load moves down. But notice that the hoist is still applying force to the load. It's still resisting the force of gravity. And when we stop running the hoist, we are back to equal force up and down. In all three situations, there are two forces acting upon the load. The force of the hoist and the force of gravity. But in our shock load example, there is only one force during free fall, the force of gravity. And because gravity has a known acceleration, we can use a simple equation to calculate what the peak dynamic force or shock load is. There are two common ways you might see the shock load equation written. They both get the same answer, so feel free to use whichever one you prefer. We need to know three things to use the equation. Our load weight, free fall distance, and the stopping distance. You'll notice that these equations are different than those used for regular dynamic loads. The key is that these equations use the weight of the load, which has the acceleration of gravity already calculated, and is why there is no unit of time needed to solve the equation. So now, the next time the discussion of shock loads and dynamic loads comes up, you can speak with a better understanding about what the terms mean and how they are applied in each situation. I hope you have found this video to be informative, and if nothing else, at least a little entertaining. Please don't forget to check out our podcast, Shackles, Burlap, and Lies, which can be found on your favorite podcast streaming service.